Next, we need to create some threads on the nose of this part. Now, if we go to Inspect, hold down our Shift key, and select that face for the nose, it'll tell us that we have a diameter of 20 millimeters. Threading is a process that lets you use a single point tool to create threads on an inside diameter or an outside diameter. You can create single lead or multiple lead threads of any pitch. In this example, we'll be creating a one and a half millimeter pitch on a 20 millimeter diameter shaft at the front of the part. So that would be an M20 by 1.5. We will look at controlling the number of passes and the infeed style as well. So from the turning toolpath pull down, I want you to select turning thread. On the tool tab of the threading dialog, you can see some parameters for mode and direction. This is where we can tell Fusion if we will be using outside threading or inside threading. For our example, we'll be doing outside threading. On the tool tab, press the select button, and in the upper left of the tool library, make sure that you are currently showing the tree. You can expand the samples tool library. We could turn all of those off, and then we could slide down to sample turning and turn on just that one library. From there, I'd like you to select tool number nine, which is thread ISO double. OK to select that as our tool. On our geometry tab, it says thread faces, and we have nothing selected. So we need to pick the face that we're going to be threading. Immediately, it creates a basic toolpath for the threads. We can see now roughly what it's going to do. At this point, you could hit OK, and you'll get a toolpath. I always recommend doing that in case you've made some changes or by accident you hit escape and you close it, you might lose what you've already created. But if I select my tool and hit OK, I'll have the tool path here. I can always come back into it and select edit. Now on the radii tab, you can set the clearance to be from the outer radius of the nose piece with an offset of three millimeter. So for clearance, I'll set this to outer radius and then shift that out by three millimeters. For the outer radius, I'm going to set that to my selection and my selection will actually be this face. So the outer is 10 millimeters from center line and the clearance is 13 millimeters from center line. Now let's go to the passes tab where we'll tell it how we're going to be cutting this thread. So we're doing a right-handed thread. Here we need to define what the thread depth is going to be. Now this is information you're going to have to pull from some type of a threading chart. We need to know what our major diameter and our minor diameter will be for this thread. The difference between the major diameter and the minor diameter divided by two would actually be the thread depth. If you look at this chart, we can see that for an M20 by one and a half thread, if we look at the average for the major diameter and the averages for the minor diameter, subtract one from the other and divide by two, you'll come out with a thread depth that is approximately 0.81. Next, we want to consider our infeed mode and infeed angle. Infeed mode determines how it's going to feed in for each cut. It's going to take multiple steps to get down to the final depth. A constant infeed steps in the same amount every time. This can create a larger amount of material being removed for each subsequent pass. A reduced infeed lets Fusion calculate the volume for each cut. Reduced infeed is a more practical and more common way of doing threading. Next we have the infeed angle. This allows you to adjust the angle for each pass as it feeds in for the cut. The typical threading insert is a 60 degree thread shape. It's popular to set the infeed angle equal to or slightly less than half the angle of the thread shape. This lets the tool feed in on one side of the V, putting the material load against the front face of the insert. For our example, we will set the infeed angle equal to 
29.5. With all that set, we're going to say OK. And if you wanted to see this better, you can always select Setup, right-click your mouse, and take a look at this in Simulate. Now the thread looks the way it does because we can also see the model through there. If I turn off the little light bulb in front of my model, we can see just the simulated cut part. 